let's take a look at Grunt. Uh, Grunt is a task runner, and when we're doing our builds and our testing and development, there's lots of repetitive tasks that uh, we use uh, Grunt to run. You've already seen uh, Grunt server, which uh, which set the uh, server running, and uh, we've got other tasks like uh, Grunt uh, build and things, which I'll show you. So if we look in uh, Sublime, we can see that we've got a uh, a uh, Grunt file here, and uh, this Grunt file has uh, the biggest section in it. It's normally uh, this part here, the init config, which is this big uh, sort of uh, JavaScript uh, object, uh, which goes somewhere down towards the bottom of the page. And these are config options uh, for all the tasks. So at the top, we're setting up some uh, some uh, variables that can be used throughout here. So we're saying that uh, our dist directory is going to be called uh, dist and uh, setting up uh, various paths and things. So let's have a look at some of the tasks. There's the uh, watch task, which we saw when we were looking at our, our SAS. And uh, when uh, the watch tasks are, are running, we've got ones for, uh, for uh, Bower and for JavaScript and for tests and for Compass and uh, for uh, live reloading as well. So it's uh, basically each of these tasks is uh, watching a series of uh, files and then when any of these files changes uh, it will run the task. So if we look at the compass one which has to do with uh, taking uh, SAS files and turning them into CSS files you can see that it's uh, watching all the files in uh, Yeoman app uh, styles directory uh, uh, here and uh, which have the uh, file extension SCSS or SAS and uh, when uh, any of these change it is uh, running the task uh, compass server and uh, auto prefixer so somewhere else we have a, a, a compass task so I'm going to just do a control F to find the compass task and here's the compass task and uh, this is what the compass task does it uh, looks in the SAS star which is the uh, styles directory and uh, it has a CSS star uh, which is going to output the CSS to which is uh, temp uh, styles and uh, it is going to convert uh, the uh, styles in the styles directory uh, into CSS and you can see that uh, here's uh, some uh, CSS which has been created from our SAS uh, and you can see that this is a, a huge file because it's got all the uh, SAS which has been generated by uh, Bootstrap uh, in there as well and so let's go back into the uh, the grunt file The next task down here is the uh, connect task, and this is uh, what we use when we're using uh, grunt uh, serve. And uh, it starts up a server on port 9000. You can see there's our server on 9000 there. Um, you can change uh, the host name from localhost to 0.0.0.0 uh, .0 .0 .0 or your own IP, and both should have the same effect in that you should be able to uh, access your uh, your uh, web page uh, not just by doing a local host or 127.0.1 but by doing uh, your own IP and uh, that means that you can test your website on devices like uh, phones and tablets or anyone else on the same network can uh, see the site that you're you're running on which can be quite helpful for for meetings and uh, things like that um, then uh, we've got various uh, different configurations for the server. So you can see this one, uh, Live Reload. Uh, it has uh, two base directories, uh, Temp and, uh, and uh, Yeoman App. And what this is saying is basically uh, Temp is listed first and Yeoman App second. What that means is that if a file 
is in uh, both uh, uh, temp uh, styles, say main and uh, app styles main, then it will use the uh, one in temp in preference to the one which is uh, in uh, in app. Uh, and so this allows us to have uh, sort of interesting uh, different uh, setups. So uh, for the test server, you can see that we're serving uh, the app directory, the test directory, and the temp directory. So this means that when we run our unit tests, that uh, that the browser can see uh, not just the script files in the app uh, scripts directory, but it can also see the files which are in the uh, test and uh, uh, spec and uh, the scripts which are in here as well. Uh, Next, there's a uh, a dist uh, serve option, and uh, this will serve things out of the uh, dist folder. And in our app at the moment, there is no dist folder. That's because we've not run a uh, build yet. Uh, and you can see it doesn't need to serve any other folders, any temp directories, because uh, we can use uh, grunt serve colon disk dist to uh, build our app and serve it out of that created uh, disk folder. Um, we've got our JS hint task, and uh, this runs JS hint on the command line, just like you saw it being run in uh, in Sublime. Uh, it will lint uh, all the files which are uh, which are uh, listed uh, in the various options that we're using. So. Uh, you can see here that uh, test has a potentially a different JS hint uh, RC defined uh, to uh, app. So you can see uh, JS uh, hint RC in here. And when we look at this uh, JS hint file, it's got uh, for the globals, it's got all the kind of Jasmine, uh, uh, the, the Jasmine global uh, commands uh, listed in there. And let's go back into our grunt file. Let's open that. Uh, clean. The clean task is uh, wiping out uh, directories. So uh, each time we do a build, uh, that's uh, the disk task. It's going to wipe out our temp directory, our disk directory, and uh, uh, any. Uh, but it's not going to wipe out uh, any .git folders. Um, and then we've got uh, our server clean task, and that's going to wipe out the temp directory, uh, and then it will be recreated afterwards. Uh, then uh, more tasks here. Uh, Bower install. Uh, this is going to look through our index HTML and it's uh, looking at our, our Bower, uh, dot JSON and looking at all the uh, packages which are in there. So you see all the packages uh, which are here. Uh, we've got dependencies and we've got dev dependencies, a bit like uh, NPM. And uh, it's going to uh, modify our uh, HTML uh, in if we have a look at app and we look at index, you can see we've got these uh, special usemin uh, tags here for the usemin task. And here we've got uh, tags relating to uh, Bower. And uh, that Bower task in Grunt has automatically uh, inserted these, uh, these uh, script tags uh, in here. And each time we uh, we start the server. I think these are uh, regenerated. So if I uh, delete this and uh, do a save, let's give that a go. And um, do grunt serve.
and there you see those files were uh, regenerated from uh, from the Bower uh, .json file and the page loads, which is good. Um, So then there's this revision task, which is used uh, when we're building our, our final uh, distribution. And it, uh, it adds uh, revision numbers to our, our scripts and our styles and things. So that uh, it helps particularly with cache busting with uh, IE, so that files uh, don't get cached when we, uh, when we update our scripts. Then we have uh, use min prepare, which was involved in, uh, also involved in running through our, our index HTML and uh, and uh, basically uh, minifying our scripts. If it, we look back at index, you can see uh, there's some more use min tags here, and this is our, our actual app which we're writing. So these are external, um, externally uh, contributed. Uh, packages and when these ones are minified they'll be minified into scripts vendor js and when uh, these ones are minified they will uh, be minified into uh, scripts scripts dot js let's uh, have a go at running uh, the server uh, dist task um, and see what that does So control C and serve and dist. Okay, so this is uh, it's creating a, a dist directory and it's uh, taking in all these uh, all these uh, files which were from uh, Bower and it's uh, concatenating them together into uh, into a vendor JS file. It's taking our own scripts and uh, minifying them, putting them in scripts.js, and uh, there's our output there. And uh, it's doing this minification task now. I'll close this one and this one. Starting up uh, the server. Oh, hang on, that was actually running. So I'll uh, localhost 9000 and our app is running. But this time it's running uh, from our dist folder. So if I look in here, I can see that there's a dist folder that's been created. And uh, the index in this page is a bit different. Uh, the HTML has been minified. Uh, there's less scripts. You can see we've only got two script files here. We've got the vendor JS and uh, we've got the uh, scripts JS. Um, and uh, everything can be served uh, statically because there's no need for the uh, temp directory. And uh, this is basically our, our built product, which we could serve with uh, Nginx if we if we wanted to. Now, if we go towards, so here's the configuration for various minification tasks. Um, you may not want to use all of them. Uh, ng-min can be quite useful, especially for minifying uh, AngularJS or preparing it to be minified uh, by adding annotations to uh, to your controllers and factories and things uh, which stop errors with minification. Uh, copy task, this is used for copying uh, files from one place to another like copying them from the temp directory into the disk directory and uh, you know things like that. Um, and then when we come to the bottom of the grunt file we've got our actual tasks. So up to this point we were configuring lots of different tasks and uh, now we're creating new tasks out of these subtasks and uh, the tasks we've got here are things like serve uh, which also has the option of having uh, 
dist on there. So if we run it uh, with dist, then it's going to run uh, build and it's going to run connect dist uh, keep alive as well. Uh, and if we do it uh, with uh, just a normal serve, it's going to run uh, all of these things here. Uh, so it's going to run, it's going to clean the server, clean out the temp directories, install the Bower stuff, and uh, run uh, run our server, and uh, do our live reload stuff, and also run a watch so it knows when to do the live reloading. We've got a, a test task, which uh, is similar, except it's running the uh, connect uh, test target, and it's running the uh, Karma task, which runs through our unit tests. And uh, the next task is the build task. And this is the one which created our, our dist folder. Um, and it's similar to the serve task, except it's copying everything to this dist folder. And uh, it's doing a whole load of uh, minification uh, tasks. And uh, this one here, revision, if we look in our dist folder and we look at our uh, styles you can see it's got a kind of a revision number on the front there and our scripts uh, similarly each time we update our scripts it will get a new uh, revision which will be updated into the HTML page so uh, we know that every time we update uh, our scripts and we deploy it our users are going to be forced to uh, re-download the scripts which is very very handy to know um, and then the final thing it does is run uh, the HTML uh, min task. And then we've got this uh, task at the bottom here, which is the default task. And uh, this is what's run if we just uh, type in uh, grunt uh, and no other task. It will uh, run JS hint, check all our files are linted correctly, run the tests and run the build. And if any one of these uh, tasks fails, it won't run the tasks afterwards. So if our, our JS hint fails, then it won't run the test. If our tests fail, then it won't run uh, the build. So if we were just running the build on its own from the command line, uh, this is how we'd uh, run the test. We'd run, well, we could run test by doing run test and build by doing grunt build.